Hi, how you doing? It's good to see you today. I have an interesting subject for us all because, you know, as artists, we always say, what am I going to paint next? What am I going to use for a subject? If we look for it, though, these subjects will just fall right in our laps. So I always want to keep one of these around pretty handy so I can take a photo. I like to work from photos because you take the photo and it's there. You have captured that moment and so you can translate it onto your canvas. And so it's very good to keep your camera handy. This is not a real expensive camera. It's just a little digital camera. I keep a, a, about an eight gigabyte card in it in case I want to take a lot of pictures and get just the right one because the more pictures you take, the more ability you have to get the one that is just perfect. So you want to do that. Keep your camera handy. Also, you want to make sure that you take the best uh, angle and uh, use, you know, there's some tricks you can use to do that. I do a lot of portraits and when I uh, take photos of my subject for a portrait, I want to do something that uh, I've taken from one of the uh, old masters, Caravaggio. He was, had a real good idea about what lighting he wanted to use and how he wanted the head tilted and where the eyes were going to be looking. And he used that to his advantage because his paintings are very realistic and they're very dramatic. And so I tried to study his work. Caravaggio did that, Rembrandt did that, and many, many other artists used that to their advantage. Caravaggio, in his studio, he had this one window back up high on one wall, and that light would come through that window and pr produce a dramatic effect for his portraits. Also, you don't have to be stuck to using an expensive camera. This is not a very expensive one. But if you'll notice, back here on the back wall, I have a self-portrait. And this is one of the first portraits that I actually did. And I took that picture with a keychain camera, the kind you buy for about 5 or 10 bucks at, at a discount store. And uh, it took kind of a distorted picture, but it turned out to be a very interesting portrait. Uh, many people, when they first see that, they think uh, they think it's a photograph until they look at it closer. So don't be limited. Use whatever you have at hand. You can even uh, carry a sketch pad and a pencil in your pocket and just sketch out something real quick and uh, use that for your source material as well. What I normally do once I've taken my photo and I've gotten the photo that I like, it doesn't matter even if it's centered in there because... With the, the technology today, we can crop it, and we can make it exactly how we want it. So usually I'll take a little bit wider angle photo and then crop it down. If you're doing portraits, you especially want to take care with that because if you get too close to somebody when you're taking a photo, that lens will make their nose look huge, and you don't want to do that for a portrait. So take, step back a little bit, take your, port, your picture, and then crop it down, and it'll look much better. This is actually uh, Gabby, and uh, this is a portrait that I'm preparing for right now. This uh, picture was taken with this camera that I just showed you, and then I just did a, I cropped it using my standard software on my computer, and I uh, printed it out just on a computer printer, and then I usually glue them on a, uh, spray glue them on a piece of uh, cardboard, so I can handle it easily and it won't get torn up. And I use this actual image to transfer onto my canvas because I can uh, draw my grid on here and be able to transfer it that way. Then when I'm done transferring the image onto my canvas, I take a little bit higher quality uh, image that I've gone down to uh, someplace and had it printed out on a little bit high quality uh, paper and uh, inks and use that to get my coloration so I know exactly what colors to use and I can see it very clearly. So that comes in handy as well. Take a variety of shots. 
uh, with uh, Gabby, I took uh, maybe 20, 20 shots to get the ones that I like. This is the one that I like. And uh, the person that's paying for the portrait liked the other one, so I'm going to paint both of them. This one is going to go into uh, my stock, and the other one will go to their house. Cropping is very important. You want to make sure that when you get your subject on uh, the crop the way you want it, you don't want the uh, eyes to be right in the middle. You don't want everything necessarily to be symmetrical. You want it to be an interesting shot so you can uh, portray them in a way that will be pleasing and that they'll like a lot. So don't limit yourself. You experiment. Try different things. Look at a lot of artwork. You know, the, the uh, artists from uh, before us, they used all those methods that I spoke about earlier, except for maybe the camera. That came into uh, use early in the 19th century. But Pablo Picasso used the camera quite a bit in his artwork. And that's a little known fact, but he did. He used the camera a lot. Uh, Vermeer used not the, the uh, modern camera, but he probably used a camera obscura to get his subject onto the, to get his uh, drawing onto the canvas. So it's a, a very good method to use that, especially in portraiture where you want to get an accurate portrayal of the person. And how many people do you know that want to sit there for 12 hours while you paint their picture? So use different ideas. Experiment, and maybe these ideas will be helpful to you as well. I hope they are, because I sure enjoyed talking about them. Well, if you'd like to see a little bit more of my work, you can go to my website. I want to invite you there. You're welcome to go in and uh, sign my guest book. Look at uh, the artwork I have there. I have some videos on there as well. It's at art-iguana.com artiguana.com. And uh, if you'd still like to see more artwork from South Texas, you can go to my YouTube site, which is Gallery Iguana 409. And there you can see over 60 different videos of art and cultural events in South Texas. And if you really want to come meet me and see my studio, I give studio tours as well. Come to Brownsville, Texas, 654 North Expressway, Brownsville, Texas. Give me a call first at area code 956-266-4799, and I'd be glad to give you a gallery tour, a studio tour. So thanks a lot for listening. I've enjoyed it. I hope you have too.